Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Uh, we'll get started in about seven minutes.
All right, everyone. Thank you for being here. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, happy to be here with you all today. I uh, hope everybody is uh, having a good day today, staying safe. Um, my name is Mike Matthews. I'm the education expert out of Pentagon City, and I've been doing a number of Teams training over the last few months, uh, so it's just a privilege for me to be here with you all today. I'd also like to announce my introduce my coworker to you, uh, Blair. So Blair. Hi, good, good afternoon. Uh, Blair Lockamy, I support as a customer success manager in the public sector, supporting uh, several federal agencies. And I'll be uh, here in the background. So there's a chat functionality associated with our team's live event today. And you can ask your questions there. And I'll be the one that's kind of answering in the background as Mike does the demo. Thank you, Blair. Appreciate it. Yep, as Blair said, there's a Q&A section uh, to get to it. Uh, kind of hover over that command bar in the middle of the uh, window screen. Um, and there is a show conversation button. And from there, you can submit uh, Q&A questions, and we're happy to uh, answer those questions in the chat, or they'll be brought to my attention so we can uh, address them. Uh, but thank you for being here. This is on Microsoft Teams, uh, the hub for teamwork in Office 365. All righty. So Microsoft envisions Teams being the central spoke, uh, central wheel for the Office 365 platform. We want this to be a collaborative and communication hub for you to unlock uh, productivity and collaboration uh, within your team and with other people that you interact with. Um, so it has a lot of the Office 365 applications embedded. Uh, we want the sharing features to be taken care of for you. Uh, you know, in the past, there was lots of email documents or shared folder drives and, uh, you know, sometimes multiple copies of documents and things would get confusing. So Teams takes care of some of that file repository uh, that some of that, uh, the email threads can be consolidated uh, using Teams. And then the file permission structure uh, is taken care of so that everyone has access to the right files once you share a file with your internal team. Uh, pretty cool. All right. Uh, so Teams has the ability to communicate through calls, but also through chat. Um, the chat is can be typed. Uh, the calls can be either audio or video, so you can do uh, do video calls, uh, assuming that your environment allows for that, allows for use of microphone and, and camera, and it may not. And if it doesn't, then the chat features are still very useful, uh, both for chat messages or working on documents together in real time. Um, the cool thing about Teams is it is customizable to your environment, so your environment uh, you can you can customize teams to work best for you and your work, uh, you know, in your team's workflow. And then um, it's on the uh, mobile app as well. Including uh, the desktop and web browsers. So it again, it depends on the environment you're working in and the permission features that you have. But teams can be run on the desktop, on a modern web browser and on mobile device such as Android or iOS. So now I'm going to share a demo environment so I can share you a, a view of what teams would look like. Great. OK, so now we have our, our teams view. Uh, we've loaded up teams. Uh, we're a member of a couple of different teams already. You might find yourself a member of one, a member of many. Um, so Teams again is that is that that collaboration, that Office 365 grouping for you and your colleagues that helps you guys communicate with each other and share files with each other uh, on one platform. Um, so I actually have this running as often as my email, or even more so than my email, and I find that it cuts down on my internal email use significantly. So instead of emailing my colleague, I use the chat feature or post a conversation in the channel. Uh, and that allows my colleagues to interact with me uh, more naturally than it would with uh, an email thread. Uh, I find that email threads have become uh, more formal communication and Teams allows the unlocked potential of kind of a less formal environment, if you will, 
uh, allowing um, kind of a, a more relaxed setting so that you can quickly respond to somebody's message. Uh, I don't feel the need to draft a whole emailed response to almost a yes or no question. Instead in Teams, I can reply to a chat message or a conversation post saying, yes, that's a great idea, or no, here's what I think needs to be changed. And so the conversation can flow very quickly uh, amongst you and your colleague or a group of colleagues. Uh, so you notice that on this left hand sidebar, when we first log in, we have our teams. So we're in Microsoft Teams. Just as a caveat, I'm on the browser version. I'm using uh, Microsoft Edge, the new Edge built off the Chromium, Chromium web browser. Highly recommend you try it if you're able to. Uh, so the new Edge and there's teams on the left hand side here and the names of the teams will appear at the top and then there's a general channel underneath every single team and you might have additional t uh, channels underneath that depending on the team that you're a member of. And if you're an owner or administrator of the team, you can create more channels. Otherwise, channels might be locked into the, to the uh, specific work that you're doing. So we have teams that we're a member of and other individuals can be a member of those teams, uh, meaning you and five colleagues might be a member of one team and you and six other colleagues could be a member of another team. There might be overlap, there may not be, uh, but they're separate um, groupings for you to work and collaborate on files together with. So if there's multiple different groupings of teams, why channels? Well, channels further categorize a team. So you have your team, but then you have channels, a place for you to have conversation and a place for you to share files. And they, it kind of breaks up the workload depending on how you want things to be set up, whether it's by project, uh, by some other type of scope of work. You'll notice here in this um, the Hazmat environmental program, we have our general channel. We always have the general channel. We always have a place to, to talk and to share files, but we have additional channels. MSDS, we have a private channel, ship recoding, and we have two hidden channels that haven't been used in a while, and they automatically are, are hidden simply to keep the screen uh, from being too cluttered. So channels that you don't access all the time will simply be hidden, will say hidden, uh, but it's easy to get back to them. And you can actually click on the show button to the right of them to uh, unhide them. Uh, but I love that feature because if you're a member of a bunch of different teams like I am, uh, the list of teams and channels can get really long. So it's nice to be able to uh, make that list more manageable. Uh, so we have different channels that break up our teams uh, by categor categorizing further. So if I click on ship repairs, I expect the conversation to be around ship repairs and the files to pertain to that too. So there's not a huge conversation here, only two messages and that's okay. And so we have some tabs at the top. Again, we always have a place for a conversation and we always have a place for file storage. So if I click on posts, it shows me in the conversation. If I click on files, it shows me all the files that are in that category. Yes, they're a member of the team, but they're also uh, categorized further under this channel. And what's really cool is if I upload a new file, or if I create a new file here, everybody who's a member of this channel in this team has access to it, uh, which is really cool. So I can work on a file in real time with my teammates. So for example, I'm going to create a Word document here. I will name it, um, let's see, this is ship repairs. Let's just call it ship for now. And I'm gonna create a Word document. The cool thing about Teams is that you don't have to have a whole bunch of different programs running as you might have in the past when you're working on projects, uh, at least when you're using Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, OneNote forms. These programs uh, for, through Office 365 can actually be accessed within Teams. And so take a look at my view. Uh, the zoom in feature is in the lower right hand corner. So we're going to zoom in a little bit. And so I'm working on a Word document with my colleagues in real time, and there's no save button. So whatever I type is just going to be there. Uh, I don't have to save. As soon as I'm done typing, uh, Teams is saving that for me in the back end. Um, so my colleagues can all be editing this in real time with me. And if they are editing it in real time, it'll actually show their icons right here in this empty space. And I can actually click on their icon and it takes me to that part of the document exactly where they're editing. And if they're on the page, it'll actually highlight in another color showing me exactly where they're typing on that document. And I can embed comments into Word. I can have a conversation going on regarding this Word document. There isn't one yet, but let me go ahead and start one. This looks good so far. 
And so I can have a conversation with my colleagues. If I need to, I can call them um, or, or leave, it, leave a message for them. Um, but we can be having this conversation about a document that can be kind of ongoing. Uh, I can also open it in the desktop app if I need to. There's a button in the middle here that allows me to do that. Um, but the cool thing is, is I don't I don't need to. I don't need to have a whole bunch of programs necessarily running. I'm, in the past, I might have had a PowerPoint, an Excel, and a Word document all running at once, uh, but I can seamlessly uh, open them within Teams, and it opens within the Teams client. It's embedded. Now you'll notice that there's only one document embedded in Teams at a time. Uh, so there's multiple ways to have those files open. One, you could open another instance of Teams in the web browser. Um, you could use Teams in the web browser and Teams in the desktop client. You could use Teams on your mobile phone. You can be signed in on all three at once if you if you really wanted to. Um, you can also use the back button. So in the desktop client, there's a back and forwards button. And in Teams, it's actually uh, in the browser, but it works within Teams. So I'm going to click on the back button and it should take me back to the, the file uh, repository, the file folder. Here's my new document that I created. Again, since I made this document within Teams, within this channel, all my coworkers who have access to this channel have access to this document, which is really cool. So I'm gonna go to my posts and notice that I've started a conversation here uh, around this document. Even though I uploaded the document um, under the files tab, it starts a new conversation for me once I make a comment on that document so that my colleagues can see that and they know that. On the flip side, I could have started the new conversation at the bottom down here, and that's generally what you'll do is you can start a new conversation. Uh, same with a lot of other social media platforms. Start the new conversation. The paperclip icon is how I attach a file and it's going to show me my recent files. Um, however, for this instance, sometimes it's useful to upload a copy from my computer. If I upload a copy from my computer, it puts a copy of the document onto Microsoft Teams so my coworkers can work on it. If I'm using OneDrive, and OneDrive is my personal uh, business cloud storage. Uh, as the name suggests, OneDrive, it is for one user, whereas Teams is for the file repository of the team. So the Teams documents, and then OneDrive is my documents. So if I share a file from my OneDrive, uh, I'm generally sharing a link to my team to access that document. Teams takes care of the file permissions for me, so I don't have to worry too much. Uh, but Teams takes care of the uh, Teams takes care of the permissions. It just works. I don't have to go to each individual document document and share it with particular uh, teammates. I can just share the link or put a copy of the file onto Teams, and that's going to be the most up to date version of that file. <clears throat> okay. So to reply to a post, um, you want to click on this reply button. Um, it does a drop down, giving me a place to reply specifically to that post, um, whereas down here would be to start a new conversation. So that is different. If I want to reply to uh, this post, I would need to click on reply. Uh, same thing from up here. I would need to click on reply. Otherwise, it's just going to start a new conversation. And I, some, I know that might seem uh, fairly straightforward for some, but it is a new platform for others. and. The reply versus the new conversation uh, is uh, definitely uh, tricky in the very, very beginning of starting to use Teams. Uh, so reply would be to that particular post and new conversation would be to the to the whole channel. OK. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> so we have our test document ship. We can work on it in real time and we can have a side conversation that's outside of the document talking about the document, uh, which is pretty cool. Now, let's say that I need my coworkers to have access to this even easier. We're going to work on this daily for the next two weeks, three weeks, a month. Uh, notice this tab at the top, the tabs at the top of the Teams channel. This is similar to a web browser where you can have multiple tabs open on your web browser, and many of us do, especially the, the, the uh, web pages that we use all the time. Uh, so I'm going to add a tab. And there are different types of files that I can embed as a tab, including a website. This list will look different from you depending on the security um, constraints. There might not be as many third party apps available as there are in this uh, demo environment that I'm showing off. Uh, but some of the main ones I'm willing to bet are there, such as Word, uh, PDFs, 
uh, OneNotes um, websites. So you can actually embed a web page. Now, not every web page allows itself to be embedded. Uh, in fact, there's code on the page that says, <laughs> I, I do not embed me or the page will not display. Um, so some websites you can actually embed into themes, others you cannot. Um, but if it doesn't even load, it'll actually um, give you a link to go to the main site to open up your your uh, another instance of your web browser and takes you to that page. Uh, for this example, though, we're going to click on Word. And we only have one document in Word uh, ship, which we made earlier. If I want others to know that I've made this tab, I can leave this posted. If I just want to do an administrative function and not alert the whole team, I don't have to do this. Uh, I'll leave this checked for now. So what this is doing is it's embedding the file that we made earlier into the tab on my channel for ship repairs. Uh, what's really cool about this is whenever me or my coworkers, so my coworkers and I go to this channel, we're going to have a tab at the top, which you can rename, by the way. Uh, let's rename this to. Uh, we'll name it test for now. So I have a file at the top that my coworkers always have access to, and I find that the most useful things here are the stuff that you're going to use all the time. Just as you'd keep a tab open in your web browser, you'd keep a tab in your team's channel for things that you and your team use all the time. Maybe it's a calendar or schedule, maybe it's a document, an Excel document that you are editing frequently, um, and you can edit it here. Um, so let's say that I got to it from the tab and you'll notice immediately, hey, this space isn't quite the same amount of space that I had when I opened it in the file view. Correct. It is a little bit condensed because it's still showing me the teams and channels side. It's um, it's as if I just want to read the document real quick and then move on. It, you know, it, it's for reference. But if I need to edit it and work on it for a lengthy period of time, uh, I recommend clicking on this button in the right hand corner. Uh, this um, the arrow is kind of shooting uh, diagonally and hit expand tab what that does is it minimizes your teams and channels view and expands the the um, the uh, the document to take up more of the screen real estate and again the um, zoom in and zoom out features are in the lower right hand corner allowing me to zoom in the document based on the monitor size that i have uh, because we have tablets and and portable devices um, it, it, you know, the 100% zoom is sometimes a little too small, especially if you're working on a larger monitor, you'll you'll want to zoom in. Great. What I love about Office 365 is a fairly recent update, and that's the Tell Me Bar. If you're ever using any Office 365 program, um, the Tell Me Bar is awesome. You can search for any setting or feature that otherwise you'd have to hunt through the menus for. And I don't know about you, I've been using Word Gosh, since as long as I've had to write papers, I've been using Microsoft Word. Um, and I don't know where every setting or option is, but the tell me bar does. So if I ask how do I increase spacing or how do I how do I print, how do I download a copy of something? Um, the tell me bar will find that setting for me and suggest it, uh, which is a pretty cool feature. Uh, so definitely a time saver right there. All right, let's go back to our teams view <clears throat> again we have our teams that we're members of and we have channels that further categorize our conversations and our files within teams so if i'm a member of city construction and, and inspections i've got access to these channels if i'm a member of this team i have access to these channels and they're going to help me categorize the conversation and the files notice that there's a private channel here i have access to this private channel probably because I made it or because somebody directly invited me to it. Um, if I was not directly invited or I was not an owner of this team, I wouldn't even know this channel existed. It, it wouldn't be visible. Private channels uh, can be made only if you're an owner of the team or, or the owner has given members permission to make channels, which is generally not the case. Um, or you can click on this ellipses, the triple dots to the right of the team name, and you can click on add a channel. And this is where you'd have the ability to set the privacy level. If the ability to set a privacy level level doesn't even show up, no worries. It's just simply uh, not something that's enabled for the environment that you're working in. So typically you want to keep it on standard. Again, if they're a member of your team, they, you know, generally my thought process is 
they have access to the team. But occasionally, uh, there's good reason to have a private channel for a subset of the users of a team. So if you have a team of 20, maybe four or five of you need to work on a project that uh, doesn't need to be public just yet, uh, a private channel would be a good way to do that. Now, I do want to add something about private channels. Just the way that, you know, for privacy and security, uh, private channels have inherent built-in limitations on purpose so that you can't accidentally reveal that the channel exists. Um, so a lot of the features in a private channel, um, the core features are there, such as files, uh, file sharing and conversations, um, but it definitely, I'm just letting you know, it definitely has some other limitations. <clears throat> Simply due to um, privacy concerns. Cool. All right, so let's go back to a channel. Um, I kind of like my ship repairs channel, so I'm going to go there again. From here, when I start a new conversation, what I can actually do is click on the A button for formatting. It's kind of an A with a pen or a, yeah, it looks like a pen or maybe a paintbrush icon. Uh, but if I click on that, it's going to give me the option to format my message a little bit more. So just like in an email, when I'm composing an email, I can format my message a bit better within Teams. Uh, you know, give it a subject, uh, start a new conversation. As long as it's here, the at mention, pretty cool trick. So if you press shift and the number two on your keyboard, it's going to pull up the at symbol. From here, you can direct mention a colleague in the organization or even a whole channel or team. So what I can do here is notice it's suggesting people I've been working with recently. <clears throat> Actually, I think this is just alphabetical order for now. Um, but the more people you work with, the more it tends to prioritize your uh, your con your contacts. Um, the reason you would use this is it sends a direct notification to your colleague. And if they're not signed into Teams on one of their devices, um, they probably have the notification set up by default to send them an email, uh, which is good. You know, that way you can get a, a hold of your colleague if you need to. Um, so if I'm trying to get a hold of Arthur here, I can start typing in his name or his email and it's going to start to auto search. It's only going to search for users in my in my um, in my organization environment that I've got access to uh, to notify in this way. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to notify him. I can actually backspace again if I want to take out the last name. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So it's just first name. Um, so what this so if I was to start a new conversation and I had not at mentioned Arthur specifically, yes, the members of that channel would be able to see that there's an unread message. Just like in an email thread, when you get a new email, the email shows up in bold. When you click on the email, it grays out. Same thing with Teams. Notice under Northern Earthquake Exercise Team, the general channel is bold. There's a message in there that I have not read. However, I don't know if that message necessarily pertains to me. It, it does in some way since I'm a member of the team, but you know, if I call out my colleague Arthur and say, I need you to see this, my team sees it because it's in the channel as an unread message, but Arthur in particular gets a Teams notification, and if he's not signed into Teams, uh, he should be getting an email notification. So it's definitely a good way to make sure that people um, see the message. Uh, you, the message is probably for the entire channel. However, I want my one colleague in particular to see it. So I would, I would leave it like this. Um, but notice if I use shift and the number two for the at symbol again, uh, I should be able to call out another channel, and I can, which is really cool. So in a private channel, you can't quite do this because it would reveal to the other channels and the other members that a private channel exists. Uh, so that's one of the limitations. But notice I can call out ship recoding, which is a different channel, um, letting everybody who's working in ship recoding uh, or has access to it uh, know that there was a direct notification to that channel in this channel. Uh, perhaps we have some... Uh, uh, collaboration between ship repairs and ship recoding, which I imagine we would. Um, great. So this again sends a direct notification. Uh, look at this. In in the upper left hand corner of the new post, I can change new conversation to an announcement. So this gives me a massive headline to work with, um, which is great. Um, you might have the ability to upgrade, upload your own custom background image. You may not. Um, you should have the ability to change the color scheme uh, just to break things up a little bit. Um, pull more attention to that announcement that you have. 
Um, when posts are made, they get special icons next to them if they're an announcement or if they're a direct notification for a member or a channel or a team. They actually have uh, different different categorizations, and I'll show you the where that shows up. I can change who can reply. By default, it's on everyone. I can change it so only myself, the owner of the post, and moderators or owners of the channel can reply, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, maybe it's a it's a news update, and I don't need lots of replies. Uh, that would be one way to do it. And I can post it in multiple channels. So an email, if you make an email and then send it to multiple uh, team members or groups um, in Teams, I can make an announcement and then send it to multiple channels. So if it's an announcement that needs to go to a, a couple of different channels that I'm a member of, I can click on post to multiple channels. It'll automatically be going to the channel that I'm currently crafting my message in, but I can select the channels and pick other channels across the teams that I'm a member of. Um, that way I don't have to make my post or copy and paste my post multiple times. You may not need to use this too much, but it's a really cool announcement feature. So if you're regularly updating uh, the content on your teams or you're giving um, announcements or news to your team members, your colleagues, uh, this is a great way to quickly do it. Okay, uh, let me post this real quick so that you can see what this looks like. And notice there's that orange megaphone icon. The megaphone icon will actually show up in everybody else's uh, team's view on the left-hand side um, right here where my cursor is. It doesn't show up for me because I made the post. Um, but this, you know, the general channel here is showing up as bold because it's, there's an unread message. Um, it would also show the megaphone icon if there was an unread announcement. It would show the at symbol if there's an unread um, direct mention for me. Um, and, and you can mention a channel as well. And uh, what channel? Oh, we were doing ship recoding, I think. Since I did an announcement and did the megaphone, I believe if I just do the channel, it'll show the file cabinet icon, the channel icon. And so it just helps categorize. It helps you at a glance kind of know what this post is all about. And it helps us filter and decipher uh, a lot of information very quickly with these visual cues. OK, so that's teams and channels. Again, um, post your questions in the in the chat, in the Q&A chat. And uh, myself and my colleague um, Blair will answer those questions for you. Um, I want to show you the activity feed um, simply because this is where those those unread messages are going to go. Um, so uh, it might be worth checking this at the beginning of the day and you have your activity feed so you can see everything that's going on across all of your channels. It's, it's especially uh, useful when you just need to get a grasp on what you might have missed. You can filter the feed so you're just looking at your activity. What I use this for is going back and looking at what I was doing on Teams uh, the previous day, the previous week, uh, especially if I'm looking for something in particular. This is an easy way to find it. Uh, I can filter even further um, by clicking on that funnel icon. It gives me a search bar, so now I'm searching through activity. And I can even filter even further if I'm specifically looking for an unread message or an at mention or reply um, so that nothing is ever lost. It, it helps me keep on keep on track with things. And I'll show you other ways to uh, keep on top of the messages that are coming in, because I know it can be uh, definitely um, a lot at first. Um, but the activity bar is nice. Things that are direct directed towards you, such as direct chat messages or at messages, at messages are going to show up here. Um, it, when you're looking for things, you can use the activity bar, but you can also use the big search or command bar at the top. And the command bar is really cool. A lot of cool commands that you can do within Teams. We're not going to spend too much time there, but you know you can search for the weather there. Uh, a lot of cool things you can do here. Uh, you can search for all your colleagues here. Um, let's see, what was I going to do? I'm going to search for a file. Um, let's see, we did the ship file, and I named it ship. So I'm going to search for ship. Uh, cool, so it's automatically uh, showing me channels that have that word in it. That's not quite what I'm looking for, so I'm just going to search further. Uh, okay, cool. So it's looking at every message that has the word ship somewhere in it, uh, which is cool, across all the teams and channels that I'm a member of. It's not going to search teams that I'm not a member of. Um, I can search for it further. If I'm looking for a message from a certain colleague, I can change the type, whether I thought it was in a direct chat message or a channel, which we've only gotten into teams and channels so far. We'll get into chat next. And there's additional filters. I can really kind of dive down on to, to try and find that message that I that I don't know where it is anymore. Um, you know, if there was an attachment, an at mention, if I thought it was in a particular team that I was a member of, 
if there was a particular day or time that I, you know, like was it this year, was it last month? Um, so there's a lot of filters for finding a message. If someone's name was ship or they had the, the word ship within their name, uh, it would show up here. So it helped me find uh, a colleague. And then I can click on files and it's going to show me all the files with the word ship in it. Uh, let's say this list was a lot longer. Uh, the filters is very helpful here. Again, I can select my team uh, that I think that file might be on, so that can help narrow it down by team. But I can also go by file type, which is super helpful. So if I know it's a PDF or a Word document, I can click on Word. If a colleague of mine worked on it with me, I can search by that colleague. So there's lots of different ways for me to kind of narrow down that document and get my hands on back on that document, even if it's been a couple months since I worked on it, because I know that I worked on it with so-and-so, my colleague. So I can look at the documents that so-and-so and I have worked on together, which is really cool. So I'm gonna filter by a Word document with the word ship somewhere in it. Great, here it is. I click on it, pulls it up for me to take a look at right within Teams. <clears throat> All right, um, we've gone over some teams, we've gone over some channels, um, posting and a little bit of file and collaboration within teams. Uh, let's jump into chat and then uh, we'll go from there. OK, so there is a chat icon on the left hand side, but at any time that you need to start a new chat with a colleague, uh, you can actually hover over their name and it'll actually do a drop down for a chat, um, I think email. Uh, phone call or video call if you have those features turned on, uh, if you have those features available to you. Uh, but there is actually a um, uh, pen and paper icon on the top of the Teams client letting you start a new chat. So if I click on that, it's going to have me start searching for a colleague immediately. Uh, so here I am in my new draft chat and I need to find a colleague to work with. Uh, we were working with Arthur earlier, so let me see if I can find him. And there he is. So I have Arthur here. Um, this is my new conversation with Arthur. It's still in draft mode since no messages have been sent yet. I'm going to say hello, and this is my, my draft with Arthur. If I was to leave and go to another chat, uh, that draft actually saves. So just like an email when your draft saves, uh, same thing with Teams, your drafted messages in channels or chat actually will save. Uh, I have never, t I've never seen it not um, save over a period of time. I've gone back a week or two later and my message, my draft message is still there. Um, so should be the case. All right, so let me start this conversation with Arthur. So I say hello. It starts my conversation. This is my one to one chat with my colleague, giving me the ability to have a or kind of an, uh, an organic natural workspace with my colleague. So again, teams and channels are set up for you to work with your team, to work with your a bunch of your colleagues together on a project or some other task. Uh, chats are really cool because, excuse me, because you can form them with your colleagues uh, based on what you're doing, based on the work that you're doing. So with Arthur, I have a chat, but notice immediately I have a place for files. This is just for Arthur and I, which is really cool. So the conversation that we're having here is with me and Arthur and the files that we have that we're working on together. Again, any file, just like channels, any files that I upload here using this paperclip icon, either from my computer or from my, my business OneDrive, is going to give Arthur permission to collaborate on those documents with me, which is really cool. Um, so I have a place to, to, to chat just with Arthur and have files with Arthur. I can look at um, the organization and where he falls into the organization. If that information is available in the demo, it's not set up. It may not be available uh, in your environment either. That tab might not even be there. Uh, but it would show who reports to who and who interacts with who, so you can kind of see the connections and see uh, if you're talking with the right person in your organization. Activity is really cool. Again, we were filtering by who worked with what. Uh, this also shows me how I've interacted with Arthur across all of my teams. Really, really cool. Uh, I can add a tab at the top, so if there's a document that Arthur and I or an Excel document that we're working on together all the time, uh, that can be right here. Great, so we have our conversation. I can format the message, uh, the whole bunch of different features at the bottom here, such as scheduling a meeting with Arthur. Uh, we'll go into meeting scheduling very, uh, very soon. Um, an additional feature is there, which is set the delivery option. This is not available in a channel. This is only available in a chat. And that's because um, just as you would mark an email as important, you can mark a chat message as important. And um, 
you know, channel messages don't have this kind of um, uh, notification feature as it does with a direct direct chat message. Cool. So if calling is turned on, you have in the upper right hand corner a audio call, a video call and an audio call button. It launches me straight into a call, it starts calling their Teams client immediately. If they have Teams uh, on their desktop, that's ringing. If they have Teams on their mobile phone um, and they're not signed in anywhere else, uh, their mobile phone will ring. Uh, it's pretty cool. And then if they have call forwarding set up, um, it'll ring to their client, their, their Teams client, and then it'll ring to their actual phone number, assuming that's, that's set up. And again, that may or may not be the case. In the upper right hand corner, I can actually add more people to this chat. So if Arthur and I have been working on a project and it's time to bring a colleague in, uh, I can add someone. So uh, let's see here. I have no idea who I want to add. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see who we have here. We're going to add Deborah. All right, cool. So I found Deborah. I'm going to add her. So this starts a small group chat. So it's not a one to one chat. It's a, now it's a small group chat and small group chats. I believe you can have up to. 100 people, maybe maybe even 200, 250 now. Uh, they just recently increased the limit. So anyhow, um, generally for group projects, you're going to want to use the teams and channels. Occasionally it calls for using a chat group uh, and that's it's pretty cool because you can kind of just, uh, uh, you know, depending on the workflow goes, you can, you can naturally uh, form a, a, a small work group using the chat feature because again, we have a place for our conversation and we have a place to work on files together. Uh, so if it's a side project or something we need to work on as a smaller group, smaller than the team, this would be a great way to get that done. Um, so I'm going to start a. I'm going to start a. Uh, <clears throat> conversation here and now it is a small group chat, so it's no longer a one to one. We have the three of us, meaning there's a pen icon and I can rename our group chat. So uh, since we are on the topic of ships, ship discussion. OK, cool. so this changes the name of the group for everybody and it's going to um, reflect that so that they can see that their group chat was renamed. Um, what's cool about this is in my sidebar for chats, it's going to show up as coming from the ship discussion group. So I should expect that everything in here is going to be about ships. Um, so it's a good way to categorize reoccurring small group chat and uh, you know give give this give this side project kind of more of a home. Um, and to that end, you can actually pin chats. Uh, you can have up to 15 chat pin, 15 chats pinned if you want to. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily want to pin more uh, because then you would miss any new chats coming in. You just have so many pinned chats at the top. Uh, but let me go ahead and pin this, and now it's always going to stay at the top. And as chats happen with members of your organization, they're going to rise to the top. The newest is always at the top. Uh, so the people you work with all the time and interact with all the time are going to naturally rise to the top. Um, uh, giving you more right, visibility. Mike. Yep. Hey, we've got a question that just came in. OK, that, uh, great. Has to do with, with chat and it says when you add someone to chat, is there a setting so the new person can either see or not see the chat that existed before they were added? Perfect. Oh, this is wonderful. Uh, that's the next spot that I'm going. This is a super timely question and a great question uh, because security concerns, privacy concerns. Great question. Um, so let's go ahead and add another member. We could leave now that there's three, but let's add another member. Um, Let's see here. Notice before I even add somebody, it gives me that option. It only gives me this option um, if it's a small group. If it's a one to one chat, it's going to it's going to automatically start a new small group conversation. So your one to one chats, they're like your text messages. You can go back to them. They're just with you and that person. Um, whereas if you add somebody and make it three people or a small group, it's going to build its own small uh, small group chat. And then if you add anyone to that, it's going to ask if you want to share uh, the chat history and you can specify how many days back of chat history that you want to share or if it's something you want them to see you want them to see what the group has been working on you can share all the chat history and that's how you would do that and then um, you would add that person to the team uh, by name email or tag if if their tag set up within the team to help categorize members so that's a great question <clears throat> okay, let's see here. Let's do a quick time check. 
All right, we're doing good. We're doing real good. Okay, cool. Let's see here. Let's get into let's get into meetings. Let's go to the calendar. Okay, so just so you know, there are three ways. There's a number of different ways to schedule a meeting. Three main ways in my mind that I want you to know. You can go to your calendar on the left hand sidebar. That's going to take you to your calendar view. This synchronizes with Outlook, uh, so it synchronizes with your primary calendar view, uh, which is pretty cool, giving you a glance of your Outlook calendar. Um, if you're in a chat or a small group chat where the uh, new conversation uh, message bar is, there's actually a schedule a meeting button and it looks like a mini calendar with a plus symbol. You can schedule a meeting from here and it's going to automatically invite everybody who's a member of the chat. Or you can actually from here you can actually call them. Of course, you could call them in the upper right hand corner as well, and that's going to automatically dial in everybody who's a member of this uh, small group chat. Let's say you had 20, 30 members. Um, you'd actually want to uh, check the top here and it would actually tell you all the people who are um, a member of the team. Uh, no, sorry, they moved it over here. It's on the right hand side. It's actually you have to click that drop down and then it's going to show you all the members of the team on the right hand side. Um, so you would schedule. You can schedule a meeting for chats. Let's go back to teams real quick. Pick any channel. You can schedule a meeting for that channel. So what this does um, is oh. Oh, we have meet now. Oh, interesting. So I can't schedule a meeting for this channel. OK, well, that's cool. Um, so you can schedule meetings for channels, just not here anymore, which is fine. Um, but if I want to meet now within the channel itself, I can. So if I click on the meet now button, it's going to put me into a meeting that automatically has everybody who's a member of that channel invited, which is really cool, really powerful. So let's say we all need to work on the ship document right now. Today, it needs to happen for everybody who's a member of the channel. I can actually start a meeting right now and whoever's a member of this channel has access to it. Really cool. Now it's not going to it's not going to email them all. It's not going to ping them all, um, but they're going to be able to see that that meeting is going on. Uh, you know what? Let me let me go ahead and do that for you. Let me go ahead and start that. Uh, I do need to give teams permission to use my microphone and camera. Um, I did hit allow. Oh, it's trying to turn on my camera. We don't need my camera on. It's already on. All right, cool. So, oh, OK, weird. OK, so the schedule a meeting buttons uh, here. So I had to click on meet now and then there's a schedule a meeting button, which is fine. It allows me to schedule a meeting or meet now with the channel and the channel can see that that meeting is going on. This is the same as a chat. So if you start this in a chat, it's going to automatically invite your chat group. If you start it in a channel, it's going to automatically invite the channel. And so whoever has permission to see that and access that channel is automatically invited. So that's two of the ways to start a meeting from a from a chat group that you have set up or from a channel that is that is set up. Um, just so you can see this, I'm going to click on uh, I'm going to click on meet now just so you can see what that looks like from a channel perspective. Uh, let's mute our microphone. OK, so I've started a meeting in the channel. Anybody in the channel can join. Um, let me go back to my team's view. So if I click on anything else. All it does, it doesn't take me out of the call. It just minimizes it. And here it is minimized at the top uh, left hand corner. Notice that the channel, the channel itself is in a meeting, which is pretty cool. So any of my colleagues can click on who are members uh, of this channel can click on join and they actually get an icon on the channel view showing that that channel is in a meeting right now. Which, which is cool. So I can look across all my teams and channels and see what channels are actively meeting and I can jump into each one. I can actually be in four different meetings at once. If I, I you know, you're, whenever you join a meeting, it puts you on hold in the previous meetings and everyone can see that you're in, on hold um, even though you're still in the meeting. Um, but it just puts you on hold and you can jump from meeting to meeting to meeting. Uh, it's only when you leave that fourth meeting that it, it hangs up on the first one. Um, so I can easily click on join to go back or I can uh, click on the um, anywhere in this blank space at the top to uh, go back into this channel meeting. So this is a channel meeting and then we have chat group meetings. And now we're going to go into calendar where we schedule our meetings and and you'll probably use calendar the most, but I wanted to, to show you. I wanted to show you all three ways from chat from channel and now from the calendar itself. So the fastest way to jump into a meeting from the calendar is to click on meet now and it's going to ask you to invite your colleagues and then you jump into a meeting. Uh, so this is if I don't need to schedule it, I just need to meet now. Click on meet now. It's going to start a private meeting. You can invite your colleagues. 
Uh, most of the time you're probably going to click on new meeting. Um, we'll get into that. Let me just talk about this uh, calendar view. The calendar view is going to again. It synchronizes with your Outlook calendar, so it's not it's not pulling in multiple calendars. It's only synchronizing with your primary calendar, uh, so you still want to use um, the Outlook calendar if if um, colleagues are sharing their calendars or there's some other group calendar that you're pulling from because Teams is here to um, kind of give a snapshot of your primary availability to help you in scheduling or accepting meetings directly within Teams. You don't have to open Outlook, uh, so it's not going to it's not going to overload with other calendars. Um, you can quickly change it on the right from day to work week to week. I love that there's a work week feature. Um, you can quickly skip to the next week or go back a week or pick a month and scroll ahead to go forward uh, as far as you need to. And then you can click on the today button to be taken back to the direct day. You can schedule a meeting by clicking on blank space anywhere or you can schedule a meeting at the top. There's also live events and we'll get into those in a second. All right, so I'm going to click on schedule a meeting for now. And let's give our, our meeting a name. Um, we're going to do shipbuilding uh, check in real quick. Uh, I want to schedule this for when do I want to schedule this? Let's do it for tomorrow. <clears throat> uh, yeah, 2 to 2.30. Let's do 2 to 3. An hour sounds about right. Uh, doesn't need to repeat. It's not going to be all day. OK, so I have required and optional attendees. Um, it's just same as Outlook. It's just how is how are members prioritized? Uh, this helps your attendees know whether they sh really should be at the meeting or not. Um, generally, you know, with with clients, I will have them be required with uh, managers or superiors. I'll add them as optional because I want them to have visibility to the call to the meeting, but I don't necessarily need them to join the caller meeting. Anybody that you invite who's a member of your team's organization is going to have access to the chat. Um, and I'll get in it, I'll get into that in a bit, uh, which is really cool. So you can invite your colleagues. They don't even need to join the meeting to still participate. It's kind of kind of interesting. They can actually work on the files. They can work on chat um, without even being in the call, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so let's add let's add some people. So let's add uh, let's add our add our guy Arthur. Let's add um, as optional. We're going to add Deborah. <clears throat> OK, cool. Notice under suggested, it's giving me suggested times. So that's an AI assistant working in the background. Uh, this might be enabled for your environment. It may not be. But if you see it, great, because it's going to make your life easier because it's looking at your colleagues calendars, comparing it to your own and suggesting a time when the most people are free. It's prioritizing the required contacts uh, and then looking at optional. So it's saying that these are great times for us to meet. OK, let me uh, let me pick the earlier time, 1.30 to 2.30. It's going to automatically update for me. If I want a deeper dive into this, I can click on the scheduling assistant tab and it's going to give me a view of everybody's calendar. It's not going to tell me what they're doing unless we we're both invited to the event. Uh, instead, it's going to just tell me if my colleagues are available or not. So I can kind of get a glimpse of um, their calendars and pick a time that works for me. If I'm looking for a conference room or meeting room and looking to book that, that might show up here as well. Really cool feature. You can actually add a channel. So, so you know, in a chat group, it's automatically going to invite everybody who's a member of the chat group. In a channel, it's automatically going to invite everybody who's a member of the channel. You can manually set it here. You can manually add colleagues. You can manually add a channel. Um, it's good to have that flexibility. It's also a pain to invite 200 colleagues. So uh, channels are generally the way to go so that you can have all your colleagues just join the channel and then you can share the meeting link with them again if need be. If they can't find the channel, uh, not a problem. It'll generate a link for them to join. Um, if it's a large chat group, you can add them to the chat group and that way you can have reoccurring meetings. Um, you don't have to type in everybody's name every time. That's that's too much. If you don't add a location, I believe the default is still Microsoft Teams online meeting. Um, and let's see here. I'll just say test for the for the for the text. OK, so we have our meeting. It's kind of set. I'm going to send it. What this does is if they're directly invited, they're going to be sent a email. Uh, they're going to be sent an email in Outlook to let them know that they have a meeting request. So just as you would schedule a meeting in Outlook and and if Outlook is up to date, and you have the uh, Teams uh, plugin enabled, you can actually have your Outlook meetings 
uh, with a click of a button, switch to uh, team meetings and it embeds the team link. Uh, teams, of course, is going to do that automatically since you're creating the meeting on Teams. So you could create the meeting on Outlook. You could create the meeting on Teams. Uh, same result is going to happen. Um, I like creating it on Teams because uh, it's a little faster. I'm in the Teams client already uh, working with my colleagues. Uh, you know, I can easily build out the contact, the required or an optional list by um, inviting a channel or inviting a chat group. Whereas in Outlook, I might need to uh, manually put it in or find a thread that already has everybody. Uh, so I like I like being able to do it from here. So I'm going to send that. It's sending an email to Arthur. It's sending an email to Deborah, uh, asking them to respond um, either accepted or accepted with new proposed time, uh, tentative or declined. And that's going to show up within the meeting. So let's see here. OK, I have, our, I have my meeting on the calendar. Here it is. I'm going to click on it. I can actually go into the meeting early. I can go into the meeting late. I can go into the meeting. Uh, you know, if the if the meeting is in a month, if the meeting has it's been a month since that meeting, I can still go back into the meeting, which is really cool. So meetings persist. So if I click on this meeting, um, notice here's my description. Notice this is what got emailed out to my colleagues is a Teams meeting link. You might have a conference calling uh, number, meaning others can dial in instead of clicking on the link. If they dial in, it's um, it's audio only. There's no video. If they click on the link and video is enabled for your environment, then they've got access to video. Uh, so that's an important distinction. If they call in, audio only. OK, so I have my meeting here. Um, there's chat and there's files. I would want to go to chat and start the meeting chat. There's no meeting chat until I start it. What this does is it actually starts a new chat group for the meeting, which is really cool. So whoever's invited to this meeting is now part of the meeting's chat group. So if I go back to uh, chat on the left hand side, this meeting shipbuilding check in is actually going to be a chat. It's actually going to be a chat group. So I can click on this even though it's a meet. So uh, we just have to we have to kind of rethink the way we um, we do things and collaborate. Um, the meeting itself is now a chat that I have access to that my colleagues have access to. Uh, which is really cool because now I can upload files. I can work on files so we can have a whole conversation before the actual call even takes place. Now, whoever is invited to the call once they join, of course, is going to see everything that's in the call. So it's still a public space for whoever is invited to the call. Um, but I, I love this ability to be able to go in and um, work on files, meeting notes. You're not going to see whiteboard, uh, but there's meeting notes. And you might be able to you might have another um, application built in to help with uh, collaboration, uh, but I can join the meeting from here. I can join it from my calendar. Really cool feature. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and join the meeting just so you can see what that looks like and what you can do during a meeting. Um, let's see here. Let's join now. Waiting for others to join. I love this. It's going to tell me if my microphone is muted, um, which is great because sometimes I mute my microphone and I forget and a colleague asks me a question. I start talking. This pops up. It immediately tells me, hey, I think you're talking, but your microphone is muted. You should unmute yourself. Um, it's also a good reminder for me to, uh, you know, if I'm, um, you know, talking, you know, remote conditions, I'm talking with a family member now. Um, is my microphone muted or not? It's going to let me know. Uh, this button is going to share my screen. So if I click on share, it's going to uh, see what's loaded on my computer and allow me to share. Um, what I love this is I can share my desktop. If I have a second or third monitor, I can actually pick to share that monitor and then what's whatever is on that monitor is what's going to be shared. Really cool feature. So if you have a multi monitor setup, share your secondary monitor and have that be your presenter presenting monitor and then you can keep notes and other things on your primary monitor. Really cool. If you're doing it with PowerPoint, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, you can share your PowerPoint view, but still have your notes view on the other on the other screen. You can even minimize PowerPoint, and your audience still sees it because that's the program that you shared with them. Uh, but you can do other things on your computer. Uh, your audience is only going to see PowerPoint, and it highlights the program in red that you're showing or sharing. So if you're sharing your screen, it highlights your screen in red. If you're sharing your PowerPoint, it highlights your PowerPoint in red. You can minimize the PowerPoint. Um, if you're sharing a PDF or another document, it'll highlight just that document in red. Now, you do need to stop sharing in order to share to another document. So if I'm sharing a PDF with you 
and now I need to share a Word document, I would stop my share and then share that Word document. Um, if I'm not, if I'm on the desktop client, I actually have the ability to share my system audio. Uh, right where my cursor is here in the left hand side would be a checkbox letting me check on check um, whether I'm sharing system audio or not. So if you are trying to share a video or audio clip with your colleagues on your computer, you must be on the desktop version and you must have that button checked when you share. Otherwise, they're not going to hear um, what you're saying. Uh, Teams is very good about having its microphone pick up voice. Uh, any system audio tries to block out uh, by design, so um, you definitely need to check that box in order to share system audio. OK, so that's uh, that's the sharing feature, really cool feature for collaboration. Um, if it's a document that you want to share and work on, I would just post it in the chat instead of sharing it, unless you just want them to see it through your screen. Um, click on show conversation. And this is where our meeting chat is. This is where we can work on documents together during a call. Really cool feature. I can share an Excel or a Word document um, and uh, my colleagues can work on that with me. Really cool feature. Um, the hand button, if if it is there, uh, it's a feature that's being rolled out. Um, when you click on the hand button, it's going to raise your hand as if you have a question. So during meetings, you don't have to interrupt uh, your colleague who's talking. You can raise your hand and on your profile picture on the um, on the video call, it will show a hand or if that's not enabled, it's going to show a hand on the participants feed. So that way um, the presenter or the moderator can see that your hand is raised and call upon you at the appropriate time. And then to lower your hand, you click on it again. There is an ellipses for more uh, options where recordings may or may not be enabled. Um, if you're the organizer of the meeting, you can end the call, which kicks everybody off the call. So this button, the red button for hang up, uh, leaves other colleagues on the call. So if you're having a collaboration session and you hang up, they still keep going. But if you organize the meeting and then you say the meeting is over, you can end the meeting and everybody leaves the call. Um, that way you know that the collaboration session has definitively ended, uh, at least the one that you set up. Um, let's see here. Show device settings is very useful, um, especially if you've got multiple monitors or multiple speakers or microphones. Uh, you might need to change some of these settings if you can't if you can't hear people or they can't hear you. Um, this is what you need to change, especially if you're on a mobile device and your camera. You've got you know two cameras on the on your phone. Uh, you'd want to change the rear camera to the front camera or or so on. Uh, just depending on the work that you're doing. So again, you click on the ellipses for more actions, and then you have all these uh, settings here. Real quick, I want to show you the on the participants view. You do have the ability to re-invite your colleagues to join so if they forget about a meeting you can uh, call dial them in and it'll show calling at the bottom let's say calling your colleague they're going to get a team's call inviting them to join the meeting even if they even if they were already invited you're just um, making sure that they're uh, they're there that they're aware in case they forgot um, you do have the ability to mute or remove others especially if you are a presenter or an organizer so you can mute um, people if they forgot to mute their microphone you can't unmute it so once you mute their microphone they're muted so they need to unmute themselves there's no way to unmute somebody um, turning off incoming incoming video only turns off incoming video for you so if the connection is going in and out or um, if you're presenting you can turn off and other people's video feeds are distracting you can turn off incoming video to turn off others video feeds Inviting someone or dialing a number. So this is pretty cool. Uh, you can invite someone in your organization if you just start typing their name and it's going to dial them in like it would a team's call um, to the meeting. But if you type in someone's phone number um, and there is a keypad here if you're on mobile, uh, you can use the keypad if that's helpful. Um, if you dial in a phone number, it's going to call that person, invite them to join the meeting. Um, however, it's going to be audio only once they join the call audio only. Uh, so if they join through Teams, they can do video and file collaboration. If they join through a phone number, it's audio only. All right, I want to pause. We've done a ton in a short amount of time. I just want to invite everyone to continue to ask questions in the chat uh, and Blair and myself will get to them uh, as soon as we can. So if any questions are on your mind, please uh, put them in the chat. I'd love to uh, address them. 
Thank you. My, my there are no, no currently no questions. Okay. Let's see. Let's go ahead and hang up this call. All right. Call is hanging up. We are leaving the call. All right, cool. So I have the the chat view. I can go back to a call a month later and see the recording of the call. If recording is allowed and someone recorded it, I can go look at the recording. Um, if captions are allowed and turned on, I can look at the live transcript of the call and it's searchable so I can search the transcript. Uh, I do this all the time for training videos. You know, if it's, if it's been a month, I know something was useful a month ago, but I can't quite remember it, but I remember a keyword. I'll go back to the meeting. I'll search for that keyword through the transcript. I'll watch that part of the recording to remind myself what was said, and then I can go on about my day. Uh, really cool feature, um, and I really love the ability to go back and see the meetings that, that occurred. Um, because it lets me see the conversation in chat and it allows me to see the files that were worked on. OK, so uh, let's go back to calendar real quick. <clears throat> because I want to show you the live event. We're not going to spend too much time here, but I want you to be aware of it. So meetings are for up to about 250 members of your colleagues and they allow back and forth communication through calling or through video calling or through chat. Um, they allow file collaboration. So they they they're more of that 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 cross platform uh, collaboration session. Teams live events is more for trainings and announcements and it has the ability to um, uh, for 10,000 plus users to be on that call. Um, so it has a Q&A feature. We're doing a Teams live event right now. Uh, so there's more um, you know, users can remain anonymous uh, and things of that nature. Um, you know, I am the I am in the presenter role, uh, whereas if we were in a meeting, others could present who are in the call. Uh, others could come off mute or turn their video feed on and, and collaborate, uh, whereas in a live event, that's not the case. Uh, so let's schedule a live event real quick. So you'll notice that it's somewhat similar. I can give it a title, the day, the time, and some information about the event. It's going to generate a link to the team's live event. The people that I directly invite are going to be the producers, and I can change who they are, either a producer of the event or a presenter of the event. Um, producers have more control. Presenters have the ability to share and present during the live event. Um, so I can invite people there. For now, I just want to show you the next feature here. So for live events, it generates a link and it's by that link that others join the call, whereas the producers and presenters can be direct invited just like a meeting. So um, think of it as a as a private meeting that is projected to a much larger audience. So it's a it's a different way of thinking about it. The, the meetings features are, are more collaborative and the live events are more announcements. So I can, I can um, specify whether it's going to be a live event for a particular group or whether it's for my entire organization. And notice that generally this option is not enabled where it's a public live event. Uh, there's a lot of different options, such as if it's going to be recorded or not. Uh, generally they are, at least for the producer, um, but this is usually a setting that's handled by the IT administration. Uh, whether captions are allowed or not, um, they may not be. It depends on, again, how it's going uh, and so on. It's also the support. And then you can schedule it like a normal Teams meeting. You can join early. Once a live event is started, you can't just stop and start. So once it's started, it's started. And once it is ended, it is ended. So there's no, there's no, um, there's no going back as there is to a meeting. It's meant to be a one-time event. So I hope that kind of clarifies the difference. Um, on the whole, you'll probably be using uh, Teams meetings and not Teams live events, uh, but Teams live events are great when you want to um, give an announcement or give information to a very large audience, whereas meetings are great for um, internal communication and collaboration. So generally, I'll recommend that you use uh, meetings. All right, back to the left hand side here. Let's look on files, see what happens here. If you click on files, it's going to show you all the recent documents that you've been working on across all the teams and channels that you're a member of. So if you're looking for something you, you did recently, click on files, look under recent. You can uh, filter by modified where you, the location you think it might be. 
uh, or the name, even the type of document that it is, uh, which is great. And then if you click on it, it goes, takes you straight into the document where you can start working. Uh, you can also download a copy um, if that's helpful. <clears throat> All right, cool. So if I click on Microsoft Teams instead, that's going to give me a massive view of every single file that I have access to across all of my teams and channels. And if you're a member of a lot of teams and channels, this is going to be a huge list. But it's helpful because now you have a kind of a bird's eye view of every single file that you have access to. So if you're, uh, if you want to see a bunch of a list of files, um, or if you want to see things across all your teams, this is where you would do it. Uh, if the search is not, you know, you can't quite think of a keyword to search for and you just want to scan a big list of files to kind of remind yourself of what you were looking for, this is where you'd want to do it. Uh, and again, you can search by who worked on it, location, the date, um, the name and the type. Uh, you do have the ability to look at your personal cloud storage. So this is different. Um, this is just for you, uh, whereas this one is across all your teams. Uh, this is available only to you unless you've shared it. Um, so notice there's only one file here um, and the sharing is private. It will say who it'll say shared otherwise and you can click on the file and see who you've shared it with across your team. Um, so you do have the option of sharing here, um, but uh, on the whole this would be your cloud storage and then this is the team's cloud storage. Uh, this makes it easy for you to share with the team or uh, you utilize your OneDrive for your own backups. Um, let's talk about the sync button real quick. You may or may not have the ability to, to do this. Um, any of the folders on Teams, you can actually synchronize with your desktop uh, computer, which is really cool. So let's go to a team real quick. I'm not going to go through the whole example. I just want you to know about it uh, because it's a pretty cool feature that's not as well known. So if you go to any of the files folders in Teams, uh, there should be a sync button available to you. Um, what this does is it synchronizes the folder onto your desktop computer. So it puts the files that are here. So if I, for instance, if I was to click on sync, um, it would put um, ship, it would put this folder on my desktop computer. So just as you would have a shared drive, you can have the, you can have the Teams drive on your computer, which is really cool because now you can make edits there and it synchronizes to Teams, which is awesome. So. I can have the Teams you know, folder synchronized to my PC and I can be working on it. I can be working on it offline. So if I know I'm traveling, I can work on stuff offline. And when I reconnect to the internet, it's going to upload that folder, my changes back up to Teams. Really cool feature. Um, so I just want to take a moment to, to tell you about that. Do a quick time check. OK. All right, still a lot to do. Let's do it. Um, clicking on the uh, more options here gives you a bunch of different apps that you have avail available in your environment. This is going to look different for, for each of you potentially depending on um, security and uh, privacy policies. So you might have the ability to access your OneNote here, I would hope so, which is your personal digital notebook. Uh, you might have the access ability to access a whole lot more applications. I'll give you a quick, quick look at that. So there's a bunch of personal apps, spots, tabs, connectors, and messaging applications, which can help build out your team's environment. This is likely to already be configured for you. I doubt you need to worry about this at all, um, but it's nice to nice to see. And there, you know, if you're looking for additional functionality, it might be right here in the in the additional apps. Uh, some of them do take a little bit of setup. Setup. Some of them are more plug and play. Um, I just wanted to let you know that they are there. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> let's go into uh, additional settings real quick. So in the upper right hand corner, your profile picture or your um, initials, uh, that's actually a button. So if you go to the upper right hand corner and click on the button there, it's actually going to do a drop down where you can change your picture. Uh, maybe if, if that's enabled. Uh, set your availability status. So this will synchronize with Outlook unless uh, your organization is still using Skype, um, which means you might have to manually set this uh, every once in a while if you're away. So if you're out of the office and you want to appear away, uh, you can change your availability status to appear away. So when you use Teams, it's going to by default set you to available. You're using Teams. When you're in a meeting, it's going to automatically set you to busy and it'll say that you are in a call. When you are presenting, 
uh, so you're sharing your screen, it's going to automatically go to do not disturb. Uh, if you've been away for, is it 10 or 15 minutes? I forget, but when you're away for a certain amount of time from your device and using Teams, it'll automatically move to be right back. Um, and then when you've been away for a long time, it'll just say away. Um, you can manually set these, and if you manually set do not disturb or appear away, it's going to stay that way until you reset it. And you may have to reset your status if you find that it's not updating automatically. Um, then you can just reset your status. Sometimes that happens if you've been invited to a call that's all day. Um, you know, it'll say I'm in a call all day, even though I'm not actually in that call just because I was invited uh, and I might have said yes at the time, but now I'm not in that call. Maybe I'm only in that call for an hour, but it was scheduled for all day. So you can reset your status this way as well or manually change it. There is a status message. Um, what this does is same as uh, your email when you say I'm on vacation. And I believe there is some synchronization. Um, it may not happen for, for your environment again, but uh, you can have a custom messages, message. So let's say I'm in your organization, I try to message you and you're out of town. Uh, it'll actually, as I'm typing my message to you, it'll pop up saying, hey, so-and-so is that, so and it'll say this message to me. Um, and you can look, you can even at mention someone in your status, which is really cool. It'll say, I'm not available, I'm away. Uh, please contact so-and-so if you need help here, please contact so-and-so if you need help there, uh, which is really cool. And when people message you, you can have it um, so that it gives you an app mention directly, uh, which is cool. So if you're away or the internet connection is kind of spotty, you're traveling, um, you can have it so that it sends you an app mention. That way um, you get a mobile notification or even an email if you have it configured that way. And then if you know when you're back, um, you can set a custom time for when you return so that your status message, message clears. That way, you don't return from uh, vacation or being out of the office for the day. And then three weeks later, realize that everyone who's ever tried to message you has gotten this <laughs> response. Uh, so you can have it clear automatically. All right, let's go back. Saved messages, any message that you save. So as we have conversations within channels, those posts, um, you know, they're, they're older, they're, they're less visible now. You'd have to scroll up to find them. You can actually save them by clicking on the ellipses next to them and clicking save. Uh, you know what? Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I go to uh, if I go to posts, once it loads, oh, if I go to posts, cool. Let's say I want to save the um, uh, the ship post. I can um, hover over the post, and there's a ellipses where I can save the message and I have the ability to save the message for later so I can go back and reference it. And when I need to reference it, it is in, if I click on my profile icon, that's where I can find all my saved messages. From here, I can also download the desktop app or the mobile app. Uh, keyboard shortcuts, very useful. Uh, Control Shift M is my favorite one. That mutes and unmutes your microphone. Uh, very helpful during meetings when I don't want to move my mouse and find the mute button. I can just hit Control Shift M on my keyboard and it mutes and then, uh, it's pretty useful. Um, settings. So let's go into settings real quick. Where'd we go? Okay, cool. Uh, you can change the theme. Uh, high contrast, dark, default. Um, I'm a big fan of the dark theme, uh, but you know everybody's a little bit different based on how they're they're working and their their eyes. So um, one of these themes uh, might fit you better. So this is where you would find it. You go to settings and then change the theme. Uh, frequently, I find that the dark theme works best for me. I can also change the language here. Uh, this may not be available. You may not have the ability to change read receipts or not, whether someone has read, can read your message and see that you've read their message and vice versa. Um, priority access. Can I receive notifications during calls or when I say do not, when I set my status to do not disturb, who can send me notifications? Um, again, you may not have access to this, but you could, I usually specify a manager or superior. Notifications, this is important. This might be configured for you. Again, all of this might be configured for you. You may not be able to change much of this. But I find that this is super helpful because if I receive a chat message, if I'm not on Teams all the time, I might wanna have it turned on where it sends me an email. So if you're trying to get a hold of me on Teams and you send me a Teams chat message, it's gonna email me as well as sending me the Teams message. So that could be very useful. Uh, but if you're on Teams all the time, might want to change might want to turn off the emailing might want to have it be banner only um let's see here 
I generally keep the at mentions to email because then I know someone is definitely trying to get a hold of me on Teams uh, because they directly use the uh, uh, shift and to the at symbol to at mention uh, me. Um, one thing that's super useful is the missed activity emails. So if you haven't been on Teams for a little while, uh, Teams can actually email you to your uh, to your inbox a summary of the things that you've missed. It gives you a snapshot of the conversation and it gives you a link. So when you click on it, it takes you straight to that spot in Teams so you can uh, see what you missed and uh, respond accordingly. Um, it doesn't have to be once every hour. It can be as soon as possible. It can be daily, uh, once every eight hours. I think I have mine set to one of these two, either every eight hours or daily, just so that um, I make sure that I haven't missed anything across any of my teams. Hey, Mike, Claire here. Yep. Is there a way to increase the volume in the alert notifications, <clears> or is <throat> that just the setting on the device that they're using? Yeah, great question. So the the volume alert is pulling from um, is pulling from the desktop, and then the alert itself can be pulling from either the desktop or or actually Outlook. Um, so it, let's say it's a meeting uh, alert, and the meeting alert is showing up when um, Outlook is open, and then it kind of does a pop up alert, and you can dismiss it or not. Um, that alert can be configured within Outlook itself. If you uh, open up Outlook and go to the left-hand side and go to Options, from there you can um, uh, you have to scroll down under General or under the Calendar feature, and you can uh, you can configure that alert a little bit further. Um, for the sound level itself, though, it's going to be on your desktop computer. So then you'd want to have your desktop computer turn the volume up. If you have the volume all the way up and you still can't hear it. Um, That'd be that'd be that's that'd be an interesting thing. I would definitely take it to your IT team to kind of delve into it further and see if there's uh, something going on with the way that the audio is being handled on, on the device itself. Because um, Teams is asking the device to bring an, an alert to your attention, or Teams is sending an email or a um, calendar notification to your email, and so your email um, alerts you. So Teams itself is not making the noise. It's either the desktop or the Outlook client. So you'd want to look at one of the two of those uh, to solve the issue. Uh, great question, though. Uh, Blair, any other questions? No other questions in queue, so um, okay. you can do whatever is necessary. We can close out or continue. Let's continue just for a little bit. Um, I do want to say that, um, you know, We'll be, you know, we still have a little bit more time. So if any questions, um, please ask them. Ask ask any of your questions. I'm happy to uh, answer them. Uh, I want to make sure, you know, my goal is to help each of you to use Teams uh, to its fullest, uh, to help you in your communication with your colleagues, uh, help you guys uh, have better collaboration sessions. You know, I want Teams to be a, a platform that kind of enables uh, better communication and collaboration. So any questions that you have, uh, please bring them up. All right, so let's get into managing a team or channel briefly. Um, if you're a team owner or you've been set as a moderator of a channel, you may have access to this. Uh, to get to it, you need to hover over the team or the channel itself and notice there's an ellipsis here. If I click on this ellipsis, it gives me a menu to drop down. Well, I could hide it from my view. Um, and I can click on edit the team. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to edit the team and it's going to give me a new view which is the settings menu for that team itself, assuming I've got access to it. Hey, oh, this is for the team itself. Um, yeah, I can I can rename the team, change the description of the team. Uh, I actually want to change the channel itself. All right, so I would hover over the channel. Let's see here, there we go. And I would hit edit this channel. And it should give me more options here. OK, so since the user that I'm using is not a owner or administrator of the team or even the channels, I actually only have the ability to do basic edits, which is fine. I just don't have the ability to go in and um, and kind of manage the channel further. Uh, but notice I did have the ability to add new channels, uh, delete channels. So you know, ch ch check out your team. Uh, if you're an owner of the team, you're going to have additional abilities. Uh, where you can manage team members, add or remove team members, um, manage the channels a bit further. 
Uh, you're just going to have some basic administrative tools at your disposal. Um, you don't necessarily have to edit any of them. Teams is configured in such a way for you that, uh, again, the, the the privacy settings are there, the, the permission settings, the document sharing settings, they're all set up for you. Uh, but if you do need to configure it a bit further, uh, you do have that, that option. And to get there, you would click on the ellipses for more options on the channel. So for creating a new team, um, so that's how you'd create a new channel here. If you need a new place to have a, a, a topic of discussion and a new place to store files. Um, but if you needed to join or create a team, you would click on join or create a team in the lower left hand corner. Now your organization, uh, generally what organizations do is in, when you're creating a new team, it actually from here goes to a, a form for a formal request to create a team because it's possible a team already exists that does that function. Um, so you'll need to go through your um, IT administration to uh, to create that new team, but that's how you would do it. Uh, so again, contact the IT team. Uh, real quick, I want to show you the help button in the lower left hand corner. If you click on help, it's going to open up this feature topics, training, what's new, suggest a feature and give feedback. I can tell you that the engineering teams are looking at this daily. Um, the suggested features are huge. Uh, private channels, uh, the private channel here, um, that only exists because of the suggested feature, the feedback. Um, you know, that was a massive ask. The engineering team went and made it a reality. So any features that you think should be there, uh, bring it up with your IT, IT team, of course, uh, just in case the feature uh, is there and just needs to be configured. Um, and if that's a possibility, you can work with them. Uh, but suggesting a feature or giving us feedback is invaluable. It really helps uh, to improve teams, especially since so many users are jumping onto teams during these challenging times. Uh, because of the need for remote uh, work and remote learning. Um, but look at this, topics, trainings, and what's new. So if I click on topics, it's going to take me to a page which gives me a bunch of different help articles. They're very uh, concise. They're just simple, you know, how do I do this again? Uh, so super useful, you know. Um, what is live events? Uh, you know, the instructor, uh, he didn't touch on that for very long. Let me learn more about that. How do I schedule a meeting? How do I join a meeting? So these are just kind of quick um, little bite sized articles that kind of help you uh, navigate teams and kind of remind you of the, the teams overview. Uh, quick overview of meetings, super useful. Um, the, the tabs at the top are the same as the tabs at the bottom. So if I click on training, it takes a while to load because they're uh, they're actually training videos, but they're, they're one to two minute, uh, three minute tops um, training videos, you know, just quick videos like, chatting and sharing files. Um, what is Microsoft Teams again? Um, how do I, uh, if I'm a team owner, how do I, what, what do I do? Go to guide for team owners. So these are just quick uh, videos or articles that kind of help you go over those features of Teams. So super useful, um, just like topics, the training also has a search feature. So you can search for Teams help and ho hopefully it'll just show up right here. If not, contact the IT team. They'll see what they can do to help you out. Uh, I love the what's new feature. Um, whenever Teams does a restart, it's because it's applying an update. Um, so when you when you restart your computer, Teams updates. Um, but if Teams um, does a restart, it's generally because it's updating. Um, and it'll let you know here under the What's New tab. Um, so on the 27th, we had uh, team sizes increased to 10,000. Pretty cool. Looks like there's some additional meeting options. Uh, we can looks like we can book appointments and meetings. So if you ever are curious about the update that happens, you can go in here, see the updates. And uh, generally there's a link um, somewhere in here. If the update is a bigger update, taking you to a web article where you can learn more. Uh, so a lot of cool uh, features in here. Great. Uh, Blair, any questions? None in queue. OK. We've gone over a lot. We've kind of gone over the basics of Teams. You know, what is a team? What are channels? What is chat? Uh, again, your teams are the groups that you all are a member of for collaboration. Channels help categorize your group further based on topic, and that gives you a place to discuss things regarding that topic and a place to store files regarding that topic. Uh, chat is your one to one chat with your colleagues, or you can make it small group chats, giving you the ability to work on files and, and communicate with, within um, kind of a more organic group grouping that you've made. Um, when you're scheduling a meeting, you can schedule a more formal meeting through the calendar. You can click on meet now to jump straight into a meeting and invite colleagues, 
or you can click on uh, schedule a meeting within chat or within a channel, which is automatically going to invite everybody in that chat or in that channel. So a lot of different ways to um, to quickly uh, jump into calls, quickly jump into uh, file sharing uh, across your teams. Um, I have found that it took a little, you know, it took a couple weeks, maybe even a month. Um, but once I started working with my internal team on Teams, um, our internal email cut down drastically. Uh, we do as many functions as we can on Teams that we can, uh, and, and it's fun. We make it fun. Uh, you know, we build out channels that we need and uh, have the conversation. The conversation kind of flows through the replies or through the individual chats. And I find that, you know, when I have a when I have a quick question, um, you know, something I might have emailed or called in the past, I can just go to chat. I can just click on chat, type in my colleague's name, type in a quick uh, message. Hey, do you have time to answer the qu this question? Or hey, what was uh, what was referred to again last week? Uh, and so it's just a very quick way to get a hold of my teammates. I find that. There's something about teams where my teammates are more willing to respond to me in chat form because again, it's, it doesn't have to be a super formal email. I can just quickly say yes, no, or um, looks good so far. And uh, so it, it just kind of gets the uh, the ball rolling a bit faster. I found at least for my personal teams use. So I'm hoping that that's the case for you as you and your colleagues continue to use teams, uh, get more comfortable using it. Um, you can keep finding ways to uh, maximize its potential for your uh, environment, for your workflow. Um, but I want to thank you all very much for being here today. Thank you for being a part of this Teams training call. Uh, it was a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, Blair, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for being here as well. Uh, so it's been it's been good. Uh, anything else you want to add, Blair? Nothing at all. Thank you for your, for your training today. Absolutely. Well, I wish you all the best. Uh, again, thank you for your time. Stay safe and uh, hopefully see some of you on uh, future training calls. All right, thank you all for being here.